In this video, we are going to talk about how to predict products for synthesis reactions. Before we get into actually how to predict the products, we need to first focus on what a synthesis reaction is and how to recognize a synthesis reaction from just the reactants. So the term synthesis means to make. So this is going to be where we're putting some products to get or some reactants together to form a single product. We are going to put the pieces together to make a larger molecule. In our case, we are going to start with very easy synthesis reactions. So it's going to be usually just an element reacting with another element to produce a compound. So for instance, we could put sodium with chlorine to form sodium chloride. Now you might be saying, Miss Key, Cl2 is a compound. Chlorine is an element that's diatomic, right? So chlorine by itself, just Cl, is very unstable. So it likes to naturally bond with itself to form Cl2. You have to be aware of the diatomic elements. Those count as elements instead of compounds in our case. So this is an element reacting with an element, even though it's Cl2, it's still just chlorine, to form a compound. That's a synthesis reaction. So the trick is whenever you see two elements as reactants, that's a synthesis reaction. Let's try predicting some products for synthesis reactions. Now notice um, that each of these four example reactions, two elements that are reacting together. So an element plus an element, an element plus an element, element plus an element, element plus an element. So that is how you know it's a synthesis reaction. Now again, you might be asking, well, F2, Cl2, O2, S8, those aren't elements, those are compounds. Yes, but it's still just one element in that compound. And as long as it's still just one element in that compound, it counts as an element. So this is an element reacting with an element. So let's go through and predict the products. Again, all we're going to do is we are going to put these two elements together into a single compound. So we are going to have our compound made up of aluminum and fluorine. And just get in the habit, every time that you make a new compound, you need to crisscross. So we know that aluminum is a plus three and fluorine is a minus one. So when we crisscross those charges, the one would come down by the aluminum, but we don't write that and the three above the aluminum comes down by the fluorine to give us ALF3. So that is it for synthesis. We put aluminum and fluorine together into a single compound, we crisscrossed, and that is the product for the synthesis reaction. Now, obviously we would need to balance this, but again, we aren't getting into balancing. Um, this week, we are just going to stick to predicting products. Let's try the second one. We have magnesium reacting with chlorine gas. So our product is going to be a compound that contains magnesium and chlorine. Now we know that magnesium has a plus two charge, and we know that the chlorine has a minus one. So when we crisscross, we would put the two above the magnesium down by the chlorine to give us MgCl2. And that's it. Let's try the third one. We have beryllium reacting with oxygen gas. So our compound is going to contain beryllium and oxygen. Beryllium we know is a plus two charge and oxygen is a minus two. Now, if you're confused where I'm getting these pluses and minuses, we're following the pattern on the periodic table. So all elements in group one are going to have a plus one charge. All elements in group two will have a plus two charge. And then over by the nonmetals, group 17, 
which is where chlorine and fluorine are located, will have a minus one charge. Group 16, where oxygen is located, will have a minus two charge. And group 15, where nitrogen and phosphorus are located, those will have a minus three charge. And then aluminum is a plus three. Um, so let's try this last one. We have silver reacting with sulfur. So our um, product is going to be a compound. Oh wait, we didn't finish this. So we know that beryllium is a plus two and oxygen is a minus two. Those are equal and opposite. So they cancel out leaving us just with BeO. So now we can do the silver and sulfur. So our compound is going to consist of silver and sulfur. So silver we know is a plus one charge. And then sulfur we know in group 16 is a minus two charge. So when we crisscross, the two above the sulfur comes down by the silver, and the one above the silver would come down by the sulfur, but we don't write that. So our final product is Ag2S. And that is it for synthesis reactions. Why don't you take a second to try these three practice problems, hit pause on the video while you're completing them, and then hit play when you're ready for the answers. So this first one here, we have zinc reacting with iodine. We notice that it is a synthesis reaction because it is an element reacting with an element. And in the synthesis reaction, our product is just going to be a compound consisting of both of these elements. So our compound that is going to be produced will contain zinc and iodine. Now zinc, you know, is a plus two charge and iodine is a minus one. And remember, every time that you make a new compound, you need to crisscross. So we are going to crisscross these charges. So the one above the iodine would come down by the zinc, but we don't write that. And the two by the zinc comes down by the iodine, giving us the product ZNI2. Let's try this next one. We have O2 reacting with calcium. We are going to form a product that is a compound consisting of both of these elements. So it's going to consist of calcium and oxygen. Calcium, you know, is a plus two charge. Oxygen is a minus two. Those are equal and opposite, so they cancel out, leaving us with CaO as our product. And again, this is not balanced. We would have to go through and balance it, but we are just focusing on predicting products this week and not balancing. Now down here, we have sodium reacting with bromine. So our compound is going to consist of sodium and bromine. You know, sodium is a plus one charge and bromine is a minus one. And those are equal and opposite, so they cancel out, leaving us with just NaBr as our product. And that is it for synthesis reactions.